unable to regulate their body temperature as efficiently as other mammals, the hyrax venture out to forage for food only in the early morning or late afternoon. As herbivores, they feed quickly on a variety of plants, including some that are poisonous to other animals. Sometimes climbing high into tree foliage to satisfy their hunger. Mahmiat Raida, in Saudi Arabia's Asir Mountains, a threatened habitat that is fast disappearing. This juniper forest is a remnant of woodlands that once extended throughout most of southern Arabia's highlands. Moisture-laden air from the Red Sea crosses the Tahama Plains and rises up the mountain slopes during the day, enshrouding the peaks in clouds by late morning. Water stored in the clouds, or falling as rain, sustains the lichen-covered juniper forests and the wealth of life contained within them. At 2,750 meters, the rim of the escarpment is cool, damp, cloudy and very temperate. The trees festooned in the grey-green lichen, Usnea, which collects moisture directly from the clouds. The lichen hangs from the trees like an old man's beard and is often an indicator of the pure quality of the air. The juniper forests were widespread thousands of years ago, but they have fallen victim to the changing climate. Temperatures increased, rainfall decreased, and the forest shrank, now reduced to an area of only 12 square kilometers. As one of the few temperate regions, in an otherwise arid environment, people were naturally drawn to Raida. And unfortunately, they have accelerated the destruction of this habitat, felling trees for timber and fuel, and clearing ground for cultivation now a protected reserve under the National Commission for Wildlife Conservation and Development. The remnant of juniper forest is still an incredibly diverse environment, home to nine of the 11 endemic bird species of Arabia, that is to say birds native to the Arabian Peninsula. Although only just over 100 species are recorded in the reserve, Raida is one of the very few places in Arabia where all of our endemic terrestrial birds occur together. The juniper woodlands are vital habitat for birds such as the Yemen linnet, the Yemen thrush and the Yemen warbler, all dependent on juniper berries for food. Raida is also home to brightly plumed migrant species such as the Nile Valley sunbird and the Palestine sunbird. Even the usually drab doves and pigeons seem extravagant, like this wonderfully coloured Bruce's green pigeon. The African paradise flycatcher is the forest's most eye-catching visitor and an example of how some African species maintain a foothold in Arabia. The coexistence of Arabia's resident birds and migrant African and Eurasian species makes Arabia a surprisingly interesting place to view and study bird life. The Asir's dramatic cliff faces and the escarpment rim are home to large raptors, such as the griffon vulture but the numbers of large birds of prey, such as vultures and eagles, 
are declining rapidly, perhaps another indicator of detrimental climate and environmental change. With more than 2,000 plant species and over 170 endemics, the presence of flowering plants in these mountains attracts hundreds of insect species, many of which are still unknown to science. The insects, in turn, are consumed by insectivores, such as the red-rumped swallow. During courtship, the male of this species catches flies for the female in order to increase his chances of mating. The diversity of insects in the upper and middle vegetation zones is huge. Insects of many different sizes and colors feed from the plants. As they gather nectar from deep inside the flowers, pollen collects on their legs, which they then deposit on the next flower they visit, thus fulfilling the important role of pollinating new plants. mountains of the Asir are also home to 41 reptile species, and perhaps the most handsome reptile is the blue-headed Agamid. The male is distinctive. His head and upper body turn bright blue when displaying to attract a potential mate. Also found in this dwindling forest is the last remaining wild primate on the Arabian Peninsula, the Hamadrius baboon. A fascinating creature, not only because of its highly structured social system, but also because of its unusual physical appearance and its ability to adapt to the changing world around it. The Hamadrius baboon is a highly social animal. The basic family unit is centered around the dominant male, who has a harem of three to four mature females, whom he keeps in line by nipping and biting on the back of the neck and shoulders, or simply through use of body language and facial expressions. Grooming plays a major role in baboon society. Using their hands and mouths, the animals gently pick insects from each other's fur. This not only cleans the baboon, but helps to reinforce bonds between members of the group. A female hierarchy also exists. The females with the highest status are allowed to sit closest to the dominant male in times of rest and other females are allowed to come close only when they're ready to mate. While the older baboons obey strict social etiquette, Young baboons play together, learning and forming social bonds, much in the way that children do. Baboons follow a regular daily routine. As day breaks, they descend from their sleeping sites, in groups sometimes numbering as many as 200. They head first for a waterhole, 
before setting out to forage for food in clans made of two to three family units. The baboons have a complex society, and in order to maintain it, they must be efficient communicators. Shrill calling and barking can be used as a call of alarm or for recognition. This baboon is staring as a threat display, challenging his adversary without overt physical aggression. This male is tension yawning showing his canine teeth to deter an approaching predator or a member of a rival group. The most distinguishing feature of the homogeneous baboon are the pink perennials of the mature females. These become swollen when she is sexually reproductive, signaling to the male in no uncertain terms that she is ready to mate. Some baboons have learned to take advantage of the encroachment of humans on their natural habitat. They have moved away from the forests, attracted by easy pickings from human rubbish dumps, being fed by people in cars, and sometimes even raiding farms and houses. There is a marked difference in social behavior between these urban baboons, or commensal baboons as they are called, and truly wild populations. One example is that males in these groups are only able to exert their authority over one or two females in a group instead of the usual three or four. They may even kill mature females they cannot control to prevent other males mating with them. Urbanized baboons are becoming a pest to people living in nearby towns, and measures are being taken to tempt them back to a more wild existence. The changes facing wild and commensal baboons are similar to those of many wild species facing habitat loss and human encroachment. whereas baboons seem to adapt almost too well to certain changes. Complete ecosystems, such as radar, cannot adjust. Changes are happening so fast that we run the risk of losing entire habitats and life forms before we can even fully understand them. Researchers from the NCWCD are concerned that the effects of dieback on the juniper forests are accelerating. The cause is still unclear. Ironically, local farmers believe that lack of grazing and cutback within the reserve contributes to the die-off. A lot of scientists uh, argue about it. Some think that it is due to climate changes. Some people think it's maybe due to some soil conditions. Uh, some people think that, uh, and the, uh, here comes the inhabitant, the local inhabitant, the original people. They think it is due to protection. Protection caused that. And maybe in a way uh, they are right. They think the dieback phenomena is due to, uh, to the fact that the trees are not pruned anymore. They are not cut anymore. 